I call it the Frankensema. It was my first quadcopter. Since then, it's been beat up, crashed, and resoldered and patched together. It's a wonder it still flies. Now it's a combination of several quadcopters, and its protective shell is long gone. So I think, in honor of its service, it's time for a new one. Under my new and fictional company Flyblade, I've decided to create a do-it-yourself kit that will allow users to create the body shape I decide on themselves. To start, I got out my calipers and I measured up my quadcopter. In a short amount of time, I had an accurate reference to build a body around. I modeled up the base quad with ease, using the wide variety of tools that SolidWorks offers. The shell, however, well, that could get tricky. I want something more organic. SolidWorks has great tools for consumer product design such as the conic fillet and the style spline, but I'm looking for something a bit more flexible. My idea of what I want is pretty fluid at the moment, and here I find myself entering into the classic art to part design cycle. The first stage is research and inspiration. I love to keep these things all in one place, so I create an internal design blog right at the beginning using the 3D Experience platform. This allows me to store and share information with anyone who needs access. As the design progresses, you never want to have your criteria and inspiration too far away. Industrial Design is a CAD software that's plugged in and lets you think and work at the same time. If I ever need a nudge in the right direction, I can access my blog directly from within my design tool. No need to shuffle digital papers. Put on some music and stay in the zone. The second stage is ideation. Here, I try to get down as many ideas as I can quickly. If I'm near my computer, SolidWorks Industrial Design allows me to start this process by sketching directly into my CAD system. It's even got a couple surprises. Pressure sensitive sketching in 3D around my existing model is something I haven't experienced before. I no longer need to guess at scale or dimensions because I'm sketching right around my SolidWorks model. It also has sketching aids with the press of a button like straight line, arc, and curve smoothing modes. If I catch something I like, I can actually convert this into usable geometry. My sketching skills are, well, sketchy at best, so of course there's an option to trace over it with splines or a hand-drawn contour curve. I'm not always by my computer, however, and to be honest, as nice as the Wacom is, sometimes it's just nice to slide a pencil on paper. I like to have the freedom to sketch wherever I am and bring that information into the model as well. You always discover the shape when you're walking down the street or just about to fall asleep. As the ideas start to flow, I record these concepts right back to the design blog. I believe this product has potential and I'm moving into stage 3, choosing a concept and designing its aesthetics. I've decided my invader concept fits the best with my goals for the project. So now comes the fun part. It comes to life. I've narrowed down a few ideas that I like and I'm taking them to 3D. ID boasts both freeform and parametric modeling. That means I get the flexibility and clay-like behavior of sub-D modeling and the comfort and ease of parametric modeling. Sub-D modeling is an organic push and pull style of modeling which frees us from the rigidity of parametric modeling. Here we can dial in the design and keep curvature continuity across all faces. Again, any updates can be stored in the blog. I can even attach the model itself so my colleagues can investigate. Even better news is that it's friends with SolidWorks. That means that when I'm ready to jump back to SolidWorks, so is my model. I can simply save the body as a component and export it in a file format that's designed to translate data from ID to SolidWorks and vice versa. Once in SolidWorks, I can simply open the file and make changes. I can add additional features like I would in any other SolidWorks model. Here I shelled the body and I added some in-context cuts for the arms. Even if I'm still in concept mode, I don't have to worry about investing effort into the model because I can simply update it should any design changes occur. Here I've decided that I'd like to have a smooth version for a DIY molding kit and one with an accent that can be formed. I create the new shape in industrial design, send it back out and easily update the feature that I brought the file in with. Here I decided that I'd like the formed piece to have a little extra detail on the top. So I created an indent on both the top and the front side of the body. Once back in SolidWorks, a simple update reveals that any downstream features that still apply can be retained. 
Once I've gotten a design I like, renderings can be created in your choice of rendering engines. SolidWorks built-in rendering PhotoView 360, Industrial Designs built-in rendering Live Render, or SolidWorks Visualize. My preference is Visualize. These renderings can be used to communicate your final design vision or help sell the product or concept. With my first concept geometry finalized, I proceed to finish off some marketing content and create a physical prototype. I've created a mold of the body using the Intersect tool in SolidWorks, and I've thrown some 3-axis toolpath at it. Within 30 minutes, I've made a mold, created a toolpath, and the desktop CNC is ready to make dust. Or, if I prefer, send it to the 3D printer. I've decided to send mine to the CAD Fab Lab to be printed. With my physical prototype soon to be a reality, I've finished my rendered commercial and I'm ready to market it. And that's how I get from art to part using SolidWorks and partner products.